Hey everybody, Trout here with BD Outdoors and we are obviously on beautiful San Diego Bay behind us. More importantly, we are at Tunaville. Today we're gonna meet Tommy Gomes. He is one of the best fishmongers in the game. So we're gonna learn a lot. We're gonna learn about fish, shellfish, sustainability, sourcing. There's so much to learn that we're gonna go inside and Tommy's gonna hook us up with all the information that you need when you wanna select fish, seafood, whatever you wanna put on your plate. Hey, how are you, buddy? Tommy Gomes? Uh, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you too. How was the drive? All right? Yeah, I made it. I finally made it here. Been looking forward to this for a long time, and I think uh, everyone's going to learn a lot today. Yeah, you know, it's um, fish 101. A lot of people don't care where their fish comes from. I, I, yeah. I have learned more and more as life goes on that sourcing is is really a big thing. Uh, to know about and sometimes even worry about. So how do you source your well, fish? It's all about relationship. Mm -hmm. I buy direct from the fisherman. Okay. My fish has never seen the back of a truck or 80% of it has never seen the back of a truck. Right. Most of it comes right off of the dock right here into the shop. Mm -hmm. And that's all built on relationships. And I, I say this all the time, it's like a cliche. If your seafood has more frequent flyer miles on it than your American Airlines credit card, it ain't local. Tommy, what do I look for when I'm picking out seafood? I, I'd love to actually look at the case and, so, and, and tell us what to look for if we're buying fish. So you wanna look for, you wanna look for the freshness, you wanna look at the, the bloodline, Hey, Sonny, can you pull that grouper tray for me, please? I mean, you can see the bloodline here is, is still beautiful red. You see a good marbling of fat content. Um, when, you, when you touch it, it, it doesn't leave an indentation. It's nice and firm. Bounces back. Yeah, yeah, and then, you, can see it. you know, you're, you want to smell it. You want to feel it. You want to touch it. You want to look at it. You want to trust all those senses that right. you have. Look yeah. at this. Red, pink. This is a beautiful piece of fish. That's it's really absolutely nice. absolutely gorgeous. I can tell you that one thing that caught my eye, there's no liquid. I mean, yeah. when, when the fish sits in that, any liquid, that's what makes it fishy, okay? I'm loving the fact that every single tray is dry, and that's the way it should be. The right temperature, not soaking in its own juices, and that's gonna allow that fish to last way longer. Yeah, here at Tunaville Market and Grocery, we're we're different. We're very lucky. Yeah. We freshly we cut fresh fish every day. Renee's back there at 4 35 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And at the end of the day, all of this fish that doesn't sell, we sell to Mitch's seafood. Got it, which is another amazing spot. That's yeah, that's a lot our of memories. Sister, sister a lot restaurant. of memories at Mitch's. And people go, oh, this is still the freshest fish there is. Right and it goes right to a restaurant. It's not sitting on a rack for seven to 10 days. Sure. It's not shipped around from truck to truck. So by six o'clock tonight, whatever's left over is already getting served Wonderful. at Mitchell's. Yeah, great. It's, a, it's great. When it comes to shellfish, you know, when you see them that they're opened already, you know, when in doubt, toss them out. Good motto. Yeah, when in doubt, toss them out. It's kind of like a relationship. Right. <laughs> And then when you cook them, when you cook them, they open up. Right, so that and one's if, sealed, yeah, that one looks good to go. This is good to go, and yep. so when you cook it, it'll open up. If you cook it and it's still closed, toss it out. So with the oysters, smell it. I think you wanna look for the deep cups if there's a lot of briny yeah, liquid in there. And clear. And clear. Yeah, you don't, right. want, that, you don't want that snotty looking liquid. It doesn't ever, sound good. Anywhere <laughs> in life. <laughs> no. So, yeah, again, the deep cups, clear, good smell, full of brine, yep. you're in good shape. Let's say I know nothing. What should I ask the fishmonger if I don't know what I want to get? Or maybe the questions revolve around what I should know. So you can play that off a lot of ways. You know, people come in and they ask, I'm having dinner tonight for five people. Right. My question is to break the ice and to relax them a little bit more is very simply, who are you cooking for? Do you like who you're cooking for? Because if you don't like that, we're gonna steer you away from like the best of the best. Right. Because there's no reason to waste your money on somebody that you don't really like, right? right? Now, if you're trying to impress somebody, 
We're gonna bring you in and we're gonna teach you what to do with it. If you're not lucky enough to be near a Tunaville or something similar and you go to a regular market, I think if I was to ask a question, it would be, where is it from? Is it local? By that, what does local mean? And I would ask to smell it. We wanted to brew a little fish. Okay. We have a brew basket. Uh -huh. So do you have anything today that... We can, you know... Um, those are really big. Sonny, do we have any smaller rockfish in the back still? Any Boccaccio? And if not, you know what we can do is we can H&G one of these black cods, H&G scale, and then cut it into chunks. You'll tell us what to put inside to make it delicious. Yeah, love, cool. tenderness, and understanding. Okay, yeah, that's true, because it's like hiding under ice. When you go to the grocery store, you get a piece of fish, and you look up in the upper right hand corner of the red and yellow tag yep right it tells you harvest date or it tells you pack date yes okay so now you have your pack date so then backtrack five or six days and that's when it was harvested and then shipping and blah 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 but the most important thing that's on that sticker is country of origin right and you read that country of origin and you go do i really want to eat this yeah if you take this black cod right here this fish has created jobs here in San Diego before it was even caught. And then once that fish is harvested and brought to the dock, it continues to create jobs. Now we got to offload it. Now we got to put it in a box. Now it's got to go on a truck. Now it's got to go to a restaurant. It's got to get broken down. Then it gets distributed at, the, at, at a distribution center. Then it goes to restaurants again. And then the servers serve it. And then it goes all the way to the dishwasher. Right. And then from the dishwasher, now you got waste management has to pick up the, the waste and take it. That fish creates jobs in right. your local community. Yet you're gonna buy something from a foreign country with no story. Exactly. <laughs> all right, Tommy, I feel like there is a stigma about tin fish. Like when, when when we were kids, if it was in a tin, yeah. it didn't mean good things, right? You, you know what I think it was? I think it was because it was so good that our parents and our grandparents told us, oh, you don't want to eat that. That's stuff. That's how I feel now. Yeah. yeah. And that's and, and it's changed. The game has changed. I mean, Patagonia is is in the game. A lot of the stuff that we have here is coming from Spain and right. Portugal. This is a garfish, okay? Oh, those are the ones with the big teeth. Now, if the big fish eat the small fish, why don't we eat the small fish instead of eating all the big fish? Sure. But I want to show you something. These are these run about $8 a can. It's coming out of Spain, and these are absolutely gorgeous. Wait until you see these, and you can see how clear the olive oil is. Wow. Yeah, that's not common for what we used to have. I remember yeah. bloodlines and squish yeah. and cloudy and, and that, is, stuff. that is really clear. And so if you just cut it, just try that. We'll need all four of them. Right? I mean, it, it's delicious. Wow. And Very mild. You think of a lot of intense flavors with tin fish. That's really mild. I'm really surprised it's, how mild yeah. it is. Yeah, and so now we, we, we go to a wow. whole nother extreme. That's, okay? that's incredible. Well, Tommy, that was an experience. <laughs> that was a learning experience. Tunaville, this is a special place. So if you really happen is. to be down in the San Diego Bay Area or even super far away, it's a field trip. I would recommend anybody coming down here. You're on the bay. You could even go fishing if you get skunked. Hey, walk in, Tommy will bail you out. Where, where are you located here? Uh, right here in America's Cup Harbor, Driscoll's Wharf. One of two commercial fishing areas designated for commercial fishermen by the U.S. Coastal Act here in San Diego Bay. We're at 4904 North Harbor Drive. Just down the boardwalk from Mitch's Seafood. We all love and know Mitch, so. Yes, yeah. we all do. Pleasure as always. Come back for more bad dad jokes. Yeah, bad jokes, guaranteed. <laughs> You'll get at least three of them every visit. Thank you for your time. Thanks, man. Yeah.